Edward and his wife Sarah were on a beach in Miami, celebrating their silver wedding anniversary. The sun shone brightly, reflecting off the crystal clear waters of the beach. The waves broke gently on the sand, creating a relaxing melody that mixed with the distant laughter of children playing. Edward, a 50-year-old man with gray hair and a generally serious demeanor, finally allowed himself to relax. He was seated on a beach chair, his feet buried in the warm sand, as he watched the horizon where the orange sky met the deep blue of the sea. Sarah, with her bright green eyes and a warm smile, sat down next to him. She wore a light summer dress that swayed gently with the breeze. This place is beautiful, isn't it? She sighed, admiring the spectacle of the sunset that painted the sky in vibrant colors. Edward, feeling the tension of years of hard work dissipate, agreed, yes, I really needed this. As the sun slowly set, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink, Sarah took Edward's hand. Remember how Matthew loved the beach? She asked, her voice laden with emotion. Edward opened his eyes and looked out to sea, as if he could see their son running on the sand, with his infectious smile and hair blowing in the wind. Yes, I remember. He always made those little sandcastles and ran into the sea fearlessly, Edward replied with a melancholic smile. The memory of Matthew always hovered over them, a mix of pain and hope. We should come back to these beaches more often, suggested Sarah, squeezing her husband's hand. Yes, let's do that, Edward agreed, feeling a new determination. They knew that, despite the pain, life went on and that each sunset brought the promise of a new day. Returning to the hotel, Edward and Sarah encountered a police blockade that blocked the main avenue. Red and blue lights flashed incessantly, reflecting on the facades of the buildings around. What could have happened? Sarah asked, leaning out of the car window to get a better look. Edward, with a furrowed brow, replied, Looks like a serious accident. We'll have to find a detour. Following the directions of the police, they were directed to a series of unfamiliar streets. The car's GPS, already old, began to fail recalculating the route incessantly without success. Damn, this GPS isn't helping at all, grumbled Edward, squeezing the steering wheel tightly. The frustration was evident on his face. We're going to miss dinner, he complained, looking at the car's dashboard clock. Sarah, always the voice of reason, gently placed her hand on Edward's arm. Calm down, love. The important thing is that we're together. We can order something at the hotel if needed. Edward let out a heavy sigh but tried to calm down. You're right, Sarah. I'm just tired of getting lost in these narrow and poorly lit streets. The streets they passed through were a true labyrinth. Simple houses with facades worn by time, street lights that barely illuminated the path, and few people in sight. Each turn seemed to take them further from their destination. These streets seem like an endless maze, murmured Edward, trying to stay calm. After several unsuccessful attempts to recalibrate the GPS, Edward spotted an abandoned parking lot. Let's stop there to try to recalibrate the GPS more calmly, he suggested, pointing to the location. The parking lot was surrounded by rusty iron gates and weeds growing between the cracks in the concrete. I hope this works, said Sarah trying to maintain her optimism. Edward parked the car and turned off the engine. Let's see if we can get out of this maze, he said, picking up the GPS and trying to recalibrate it once more. The tension in the air was palpable, but Sarah, always patient, held Edward's hand. We'll make it, love. We're in this together. Edward looked at her and smiled, feeling a bit calmer. Yes, we're together. He agreed, determined to find their way back. As Edward tried, with increasing frustration, to recalibrate the GPS, something caught his attention in the furthest corner of the parking lot. Among the shadows cast by the dim light posts, he spotted an old car, covered in a thick layer of dust and dry leaves. Sarah, look at that, he said, pointing to the vehicle. Curious, Sarah followed her husband's gaze. 
Edward got out of the car, walking slowly towards the abandoned vehicle. Each step seemed to echo in the silence of the parking lot. When he got close enough, his heart almost stopped. It's not possible, he murmured, his voice trembling. The blue Chevette, now rusty and worn by time, was before him. It was the same car that had been stolen 20 years ago. Sarah, who had followed Edward, stopped by his side, her eyes wide with surprise. Edward, is that really it? She asked, almost breathless. Edward nodded, unable to take his eyes off the car. Yes, it's our Chevette. Look at the license plate, he responded, his voice choked with emotion. A mix of fear and hope took hold of the couple as they ran to the car. Edward ran his hand over the dusty hood, feeling the rough texture under his fingers. How did it end up here? He asked, more to himself than to Sarah. After all these years, Sarah, with tears in her eyes, touched the car door. Edward, what if, what if Matthew is nearby? The hope in her voice was palpable. Edward, feeling a lump in his throat, tried to open the car door, but it was stuck. We'll need some force, he said, kicking the door. With a loud creak, the door finally gave way, releasing a cloud of dust that made them step back for a moment. Recovering, Edward entered the car, his eyes scanning the interior. Inside the car, Edward searched every corner, his heart racing. It was then that his eyes fixed on something familiar on the back seat. Sarah, come look at this, he called, his voice trembling. Sarah quickly approached, and they both looked at the faded blue backpack, covered in dust but unmistakable. It's Matthew's backpack, said Edward, almost whispering, as he carefully picked up the object. Sarah, with tears in her eyes, took the backpack from Edward's hands. My God, Edward, it really is his backpack, she said, her voice breaking with emotion. I remember when we bought this backpack for his first day of school. He was so excited. The painful memories and the hope of finding Matthew flooded their hearts. Edward, feeling the urgency of the situation, took out his cell phone and dialed Patrick, a trusted police colleague. Patrick, you won't believe what I found he said, trying to stay calm. I found my car, the blue Chevette that was stolen 20 years ago. Edward's voice was heavy with emotion and he struggled to hold back tears. On the other end of the line, Patrick was silent for a moment, processing the information. Edward, are you sure? That's incredible, responded Patrick, disbelief evident in his voice. Yes, Patrick, it's it. And inside the car, we found Matthew's backpack continued Edward, his voice choked. We need to reopen the case. There's a chance we could find our son. As Edward spoke with Patrick, Sarah held the backpack tightly, tears streaming down her face. Edward, we have to find Matthew. We can't miss this opportunity, she said, determination shining in her eyes. Edward nodded, hanging up the phone. Patrick will help us. We'll reopen the case and do everything necessary to find our son, he promised, embracing Sarah. The discovery of the backpack brought new hope to the couple, and they were more determined than ever to find Matthew. We'll bring our boy back, said Edward, his voice firm. We're closer than ever. Twenty years earlier, on a sunny afternoon, Edward had picked up his son Matthew from school. Matthew, at seven years old, ran to the car with a radiant smile. Dad, today I made a drawing for you, he said, proudly showing a colorful paper. Edward smiled, his heart warmed by his son's enthusiasm. It's beautiful, Matthew. Let's show it to mom when she gets out of college, he replied, helping the boy settle in the back seat of the blue Chevette. While waiting for Sarah, who was still in class, Edward and Matthew talked about the day at school and plans for the weekend. Dad, can we go to the beach on Saturday? Matthew asked, his eyes shining with expectation. Of course, son. We'll build the biggest sandcastle ever, promised Edward, laughing. Suddenly, the tranquility of the afternoon was interrupted by two armed men who approached the car. Get out of the car now, 
one of them shouted, pointing a gun at Edward. Edward's heart raced, and he tried to protect Matthew. Please don't hurt my son, he pleaded, his voice trembling. But before he could react, one of the men struck him on the head, causing him to pass out instantly. When Edward regained consciousness, the Chevette and Matthew had disappeared. Despair overtook him as he shouted his son's name, hoping he would respond from somewhere. Matthew! Matthew! The only response was the echo of his own voice in the cold night. When Sarah came out of college and saw the chaotic scene, her world collapsed. Edward, where is our son? She asked in panic. Edward, still dazed, could only stammer, They took him. They took our Matthew. The frantic search for the boy began immediately. Police cars scoured the city, and posters with Matthew's photo were spread in every corner. But despite tireless efforts, there were no leads. After a year of fruitless searches, the case was closed, and Matthew was declared dead. Edward, however, never accepted this conclusion. I know he's alive, Sarah. I feel it, he said, determined. For years, Edward scoured every corner of the city, following any lead, no matter how small, in hopes of finding his son. I will never give up on you, Matthew, he promised, night after night, keeping the flame of hope alive. Now, with the discovery of the car, the city's police forces quickly mobilized to reopen the case. Edward, his heart pounding, followed every move of the investigators. We need all possible resources. We can't let this opportunity slip by, he told the police chief, determination evident in his voice. The news of the rediscovery of the blue Chevette and Matthew's backpack quickly spread. The national media covered the story fervently, bringing a wave of public attention. Today, in a stunning turn of events, the car stolen 20 years ago was found, reigniting hopes of finding Matthew, announced the reporter on television, as images of the car and backpack were displayed. Edward and Sarah were swamped by journalists and cameras. Edward, how do you feel seeing the car again? asked a reporter. It's a mix of emotions. There's hope, but also a lot of pain. We just want our son back, replied Edward, holding Sarah's hand, who could not contain her tears. Public commotion was immense. People from across the country empathized with the family, sending messages of support and prayers. We're with you, Edward and Sarah. Don't give up, read a message on a social network. The story touched the heart of the nation, which followed each new development with anxiety. The only concrete evidence was Matthew's backpack containing children's drawings. Sarah, holding the backpack, showed the drawings to the camera. These are the drawings Matthew made. He loved to draw. This gives us hope that he's still out there, somewhere, she said, her voice choked with emotion. The media impact brought new leads, and in the reports, the police left a contact number for any news regarding Matthew's disappearance. People began calling the police, reporting possible sightings of Matthew over the years. We've received several calls. We'll investigate each one of them, stated the police chief, ensuring that no lead would be left unexplored. The entire nation was moved by the family's perseverance and sorrow. We will find Matthew. We won't give up, promised Edward, his voice firm. The hope of finding his son reignited a flame of determination in their hearts, and they were ready to face any challenge that came their way. Weeks later, while Edward and Sarah were still trying to process the discovery of the car, the phone rang. Edward answered, and a female voice on the other line said, My name is Melanie. I have information about Matthew. Edward's heart nearly stopped. What do you know? Please, tell me, he implored his voice laden with urgency. Melanie calmly replied, I'd prefer to talk in person. Can we meet? The couple, anxious and hopeful, arranged to meet Melanie at a discreet restaurant in the city center. On the night of the meeting, Edward and Sarah could barely contain their anxiety. Does she really know something about our son? Asked Sarah, her voice trembling. Edward, trying to remain calm, replied, We'll find out soon. 
we need to have hope. Upon arriving at the restaurant, they were greeted by a waiter who led them to a reserved table. She's already here, he said, pointing to a woman sitting in a corner with a serious and focused look. Edward and Sarah approached, and Melanie stood up to greet them. Thank you for coming, she said with a slight smile. The anticipation was enormous, and their hearts raced. What do you know about our son? Edward asked, unable to hide his anxiety. Melanie took a deep breath before beginning. I saw the report on TV about the car and the backpack. Then, I remembered something that happened many years ago, she started, looking directly into Edward and Sarah's eyes. I used to work at an orphanage, and one day a boy was left at our doorstep. He was confused and scared and couldn't remember much. We called him James, but he always said his name was Matthew, Melanie explained, as Sarah tightly held Edward's hand. Do you think this boy could be our Matthew? asked Sarah, her voice full of hope. Melanie nodded. I believe so. He talked about a blue backpack, just like the one you showed on TV. And the drawings. The drawings he made were similar to those you showed on TV, she said with conviction. Edward and Sarah exchanged glances, hope growing in their hearts. We need to find him. Can you help us? asked Edward, his voice firm. Melanie smiled. Of course, let's find Matthew together, she promised, sealing a pact of hope and determination. After some phone calls, they made contact with the orphanage and managed to find Matthew. In a call, Edward briefly explained the story, and Matthew realized he might be the lost son of the couple and decided to meet with Edward and Sarah. They set a date and place. At the restaurant, Edward and Sarah sat anxiously when the door opened and a young figure entered. The couple watched attentively as the young man approached their table. You are Edward and Sarah, right? He asked, his voice trembling. Edward nodded, feeling a lump in his throat. Yes, we are. And you are? He asked, his voice full of expectation. The young man took a deep breath, his eyes welling up. My name is Matthew, he said with a shy smile time seemed to stop. Sarah brought her hand to her mouth, her eyes wide with surprise. Matthew? Our Matthew? She asked, her voice almost inaudible. The young man nodded, and tears began to roll down Sarah's face. The reunion was loaded with emotion. Edward stood up first, his eyes full of tears, and hugged Matthew tightly. My son, my God, it's really you! He exclaimed his voice choked. The resemblance between Matthew and the couple was undeniable. Sarah soon joined the embrace, sobbing with joy. I can't believe we finally found you, she said, stroking Matthew's face. Matthew also cried, feeling the warmth and love of his biological parents. I saw on TV about the car and the drawings. I remember having a backpack like that, he explained, his voice trembling. And when you managed to contact me, then everything made sense. Sarah, with tears in her eyes, said, We never stopped looking for you, Matthew. We always knew that one day we would find you. Matthew smiled, feeling finally complete. And now we are together again, he said, embracing his parents tightly. We have a lot to catch up on, but I'm happy to be back. The reunion was a moment of healing and renewal where love and perseverance finally brought the family back together. Matthew, feeling the warmth and love of his biological parents, whispered, I'm so happy to be back. We have a lot to catch up on, but I'm ready to start again, together. The reunion was a moment of healing and renewal, where love and perseverance finally brought the family back together. The revealed truth reunited hearts that had never stopped beating in sync, and the promise of a future together filled the atmosphere with hope and joy. After that reunion, Edward, Sarah, and Matthew began to rebuild their relationship with fervent dedication. Each day was a new opportunity to share stories and make up for lost time. Sitting at the dinner table, Sarah looked at Matthew with a caring smile. 
Do you remember when we used to go to the beach and build sandcastles? She asked, her eyes shining with nostalgia. Matthew, with a shy smile, replied, I vaguely remember, but I feel like those memories are coming back bit by bit. I loved those afternoons at the beach. Edward moved, added, You always ran to the sea and came back with seashells to show us. You were our little explorer. Evenings were filled with long conversations, laughter, and even some tears. Matthew shared stories of his life with his adoptive family, while Edward and Sarah told of the years of relentless search. We never gave up on you, Matthew, said Edward, holding his son's hand. Every day without you was a struggle, but we always believed that one day we would find you. Sarah, with a soft voice, added, We kept every one of your drawings, every memory. We always knew that one day you would come back to us. Matthew, moved by his parents' perseverance, felt a deep gratitude. I also felt that something was missing. Now I understand that it was you, he said, his eyes tearful. The future promised to be one of healing and happiness. The family, now reunited, was determined to enjoy every moment together. Edward and Sarah planned trips, outings, and activities they could do as a family. Let's take a trip to that beach where we used to go, suggested Edward. It will be like reliving those moments, but now with new memories. The couple's story of love and perseverance touched the hearts of everyone who knew them. Friends and family were moved to see the family together. You are proof that the family bond is unbreakable, said a close friend. Your strength and determination are inspiring. They were complete again, ready for a new chapter in their lives. Together, stronger than ever, Edward, Sarah, and Matthew knew that the future held many joys and unforgettable moments. The promise of a new beginning filled their hearts with hope and love, and they were ready to face any challenge, united as a true family. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how. This was the story. Thank you for watching until the end and see you next time.